Welcome to Film Study, an All-American podcast with Lexi. I'm Lexi. Don't forget to like, subscribe, share, comment, all those things. Today I got Jason on the pod. So for all of you who love Jason, who be in my comments, here's Jason for you. We are reviewing Homecoming episode 112, the the penultimate, the penultimate episode to the finale of the first season of All-American Homecoming. So yeah, hope you enjoy it. Jason, you ready? Yes, I am. I am. I'm very ready. Blessed to be here. All right. Uh, me too. Look, what were your thoughts? What were your thoughts on the overall episode? I'm going to start out, though, Go ahead, yeah. and say we loved the drumline reference, okay? <laughs> we love the not bad. We love the little holding out the drumstick at the end. We stand the drumline reference. Because why would you not when you have drumline Sean? Why would you not? Why would you not? So anyway, that's so the the episode gets high ranks for me just for that fact. <laughs> um, yeah, but what about you? Uh, you know, I thought it was I thought it was a pretty good episode. You know, you know, I'm not like fully committed to this yet, so you know, I just like you know the the whole <laughs> you know Keisha Cam, you know Jr. and uh, Thea Thea type thing. I don't. I mean the rest, you know, I don't really care about too much. I haven't been able to get. Um, I haven't been. That's a, really funny. I haven't really been able to get, get into it like that. That's that's hilarious. I think <laughs> Homecoming is a show that is, um, and I guess it was the same way for All American, but it just feels I I because I came in during the second season, mm. it just feels like more people have solidified their favorites, like. <laughs> I don't know. I don't even know if that makes sense, yeah. but I feel like it was, there's more of a share the love around the characters yeah. uh, <laughs> uh, for all American. And there's like the people definitely have their favorites for home, homecoming. I could be wrong. Though. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but talking about these is my confessions. Just went up the bop, 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 bop. They should have played the song. They should have played the song. <laughs> One person that had a major confession is Marcus, Coach Marcus, Coach Turner. Um, cause he's a snitch and he didn't tell nobody that he was a snitch. No, he was the he was the uh source for Amara and this is because this is a year so exactly a year since the backdoor pilot uh in the uh, in the realm of the show world. Um you know Everybody was reflecting on the past year, the fact that the baseball team didn't get to play, the fact that they, uh, you know, have to do more this season to still be a program. Um, And everybody's just like, everybody who knows, i.e. Damon, i.e. Ralph, when he found out, is just like, you let Amara take all of this fall for you. Like, are you okay? This man still isn't on his meds, so he gets upset. He fires his coaches. Uh, you know what I mean? And yeah, he just yeah. makes another scene. He goes off. He, he uh, what is it? Impulsively tells tells the baseball team at their baseball team barbecue that he was the mole, uh, the mole, <laughs> that he was a source. Um, and then just goes, goes missing. Let me say this, two things. Santiago ain't ish. <laughs> Santiago ain't ish because this man always has a problem with somebody. Like always. <laughs> like clearly your coach is not okay and you're going like, I don't care. He didn't tell me that he blah blah blah. Like, sir, go sit down somewhere. <laughs> and another thing, uh, Corey acted down. Corey acted down because I think it's very uh difficult to do those sorts of scenes where you just like where you look ashamed like i feel like ashamed is a really hard sort of emotion feeling Mm -hmm. to get across uh and he nailed it um so i really enjoyed that performance from him but what did you think about that storyline oh yeah i thought it i thought it was very interesting and i thought he did a a great amazing job also um because you know like you know obviously you know from our viewers perspective you know we know like he got something going on with like mental health, you know, I'm not going to talk about it or anything because I don't know that much about it, but you know, it's a mood disorder. Yeah. So, you know, he got a mood disorder and you know, he he just going through all these things. He's struggling, you know, he's not taking his medicine and you know, it's, it's plenty of reasons why he not, you know, and his mind is like 
reasons why he's not taking it or or whatever. But right, um, you know, I think I think you know by Ralph saying that to him, um, you know, it just like just got to him and you know he felt he needed to you know do that you know let the world you know let the team know let the people know at the at the barbecue you know um and it was it was just like really hard for him you know because you know he was trying to do a good thing he wanted his he wanted the people you know these black students and you know uh to be able to and athletes you know to be able to you know get an education and uh to you know not be going to school you know and yeah. skipping and skipping yeah. class. So, you know, he tried to do a good thing and, you know, he may not have done it the right way, but, you know, he still was trying to look out for, you know, uh what the, for for the athletes and, you know, he, the best interests. Yeah. 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 So he wanted he wanted to, you know, just see them flourish into men, you know. Um he that's what he wanted for him. And, you know, yeah. uh he yeah, he didn't go about it the right way, you know. Um, but you know, he did what he felt he had to do, and um, so I don't look at him necessarily as no, as no snitch or anything, you know. But you know, he just he just uh, did what he felt he had to, and um, hopefully he get back on his meds soon, you know. Yes, um, yes, we pray. But I did think to that point the line about like I am not the bad guy. Yeah, uh, was was really good, and he left Amara a voicemail yep. that seemed very. Uh, ominous, uh, but you know she had spent the day sort of trying to save Bringston. Had a few conversations with Zeke about what was going on because, she, of course, in the last episode she found out that it was going to be sold or not sold. It was going to be merged with a predominantly white institution, and so Zeke doesn't deny it, which I was very surprised. I mean, I I wasn't surprised, but also like as a audience member I was surprised I was just like oh he didn't deny it it was just like oh that's nice Mm -hmm. um and she's like working on this article she tells Ralph to hold it because she doesn't want number one the fallout that she got the last time and she really wants to be precious because she cares a lot about Bringston uh so she gets together uh a group of alumni uh basically to drum up donations they drum up four million dollars like that's a lot of money that's a lot of money in a day in a day especially um but uh, it's not necessarily enough. You know, Zeke gave her a quote for the article. The article finally goes live. Um, and the, uh, where that ended is that uh, Bringston is not being merged uh, because uh, with the Black Lives Matter movement, the uh, well, I don't remember the name of the college, but the other college didn't want to have that sort of backlash. Um, so they're not being merged, but they ended up uh, almost being sold uh, unless they can raise money, which is going to be the storyline of the next episode. And at the time, that's when she got the voicemail that, that Marcus is, was missing and she thought that she he might do something yeah. to himself. So what did you think about all that with her? Um, You know, I thought, I thought, you know, she 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 handled it you know the best way that she that she could um as far as you know uh finding it out and you know trying to stop it uh and you know i guess successfully stopping the merge but you know not stopping you know the school possibly getting sold um right but you know i think i think i think she had a point you know when you know she met with like i guess the uh the boosters or whatever you want to call them, you know, the, uh, the alumni, yeah, the alumni, the you know, yeah. and, you know, she asked him like, how many, uh, of you, you know, give money when, you know, Zeke asks for money, but when y'all come, right. when, when it's homecoming, you know, y'all all out and showing and, you know, doing, for the food. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I know that's right. That would be me too. So, you know, like, you know, like these are all successful people, uh, you know, Right. Um, so you know they they you know I think they should be doing more you know but you know uh, yeah especially for the energy they were giving him you, like ooh I, I'm gonna go buy his album <laughs> <Okay. laughs> goodbye goodbye um, here's the thing with me oh go ahead oh uh, no go ahead oh I was gonna say here's the thing with me in this storyline um, I'm just. <laughs> 
I'm just not into it. I'm just not into it. Because we know that Brees, well, we knew that Brees wasn't going to be merged, yeah, number one. Definitely. And we know that, you know, it's unlikely, unlikely that it's going to be sold. Uh, we'll get more to that when we talk about predictions, yeah. but I just would have liked to see them do something that keeps the audience on their toes. And this ain't it. This ain't it. <laughs> um, and I want better for Amara. I've been saying that for a couple weeks now, but I just want better better for Amara. <laughs> um, any any more points on the Amara tip? Um, you know, I think, uh, you know, I think I think she went the best for uh, Marcus, um, and stuff like that. So you know, she you know, she she really cares about him, obviously. Um, and you know, she, like you said, like we all know she cares about the school and, you know, uh, we all know that the, the school ain't going to be sold or, you know, um, right. So like, is it like, I just like, yeah, no point of it. You know, I think and that, that's just like what I think that right. I, I just, yeah, I would just like to see a different, different storyline. Um, but again, we'll talk about that more when we get to prediction. What is, oh, what is the girl's sister? Oh, I, yeah, I don't Veronica, something like yeah, that. Yeah, Veronica. Yeah, I think I, I thought that <laughs> yeah, she I didn't want like more. her. I was just like I thought they should have went more. She was doing that. a mile. She what? I said I thought they should have been more into that. You know, like you know. Yeah, like really going down that. Yeah, it's you. I don't know. It's, I just wasn't feeling the vibes from her. I mean, it's, it's, she's supposed to be like a bad guy in this story, right? But like, it mm-hmm. was just, it was giving force. She was just like, let's. Remove all the pictures of the black people and yeah, put like up some what? white white app developers. <laughs> like what? No, exactly. Just it wasn't giving. It wasn't giving. Um, or maybe it was giving exactly what it needed to give because we're not supposed to like her. <laughs> <laughs> um, but people that you do like, as you just mentioned at the top, Cam and Keisha. Keisha tries is trying to talk to uh, Cam, uh, but thinks he's with. Yeah, Gabby now. Um, and here's the thing. <laughs> I'm going to get into this right now. Because I predicted, I was just like, he should go come back next episode after being missing in the last one. <laughs> Is she going to be like, I've worked on myself for an episode. <laughs> <laughs> Let's be together now. And that's exactly what happened. <laughs> that's exactly <laughs> exactly what happened she over here writing a single letter and is like i've solved all my problems <laughs> no she didn't say she solved all her problems but she was just like i've worked on myself i've written a letter for my future self Da-da-da. like let's be together but in between all that <laughs> in between all that she has a conversation with simone and uh they talk about her uh because she came at him first and mm-hmm. what she described as like I, she came at him weak right with just yeah. like I'm ready now and da 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 so she talks about that with Simone because he rejected her at first uh, and was just like let's say friends um, and so she was just like oh it's just bad timing um, which is a theme and we'll get to that when we get to Simone and Damon but uh, it was just like oh it's just bad timing um, and Simone basically tells her to fight fight for Cam Mm-hmm. Uh, like she <laughs> <laughs> like she did not like she in quotations fought uh, fought for Jordan I will say this I will say this I think that she did the right thing in attempting to put up boundaries and not even just attempting I think in putting up boundaries with Damon so I'll give her that but I'm the the trip the trip to to Beverly Hills I don't know if I would call that <laughs> fighting for her relationship um I mean <laughs> look to her credit y'all know I'm gonna say this to her credit Layla and Jordan are each other's people and she noticed that right quick <laughs> so I mean there's nothing she could have done <laughs> there's nothing she could have done uh. But I uh, yeah, she she wrote that metal letter. It was like, okay, it's wraps. I'm done. I'm done. It's wraps for me. 
Um, so yeah, what did you think about that? Obviously, Cam and Keisha, she ends up coming back harder, stronger, uh, gives tells him about this letter that she wrote and um, he then like accepts it and they get together. And that was after he got some advice too from Gabby that's yeah. just like, if she was willing to own her crap, which she did, yeah, yeah. If she was willing to own her crap. Um, you like that take that's a big deal, and so he took all that plus her coming back, and they got together. So, what do you think about that? Well, you know, I thought, um, you know, I think, you know, you know, even though it was just like one episode, I think, you know, uh, and you know, and you know, Keisha mine, you know, and her thinking like he might, you know, try to date Gabby or something and stuff like that. Um, I think she like just felt like it, you know, it was necessary to try to push it up, you know, try to you know, try to get, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? You know, try to, um, work on herself, um, you know, yeah. fast at a fast pace, you know, and, and, you know, all, all American homecoming time. Um, and to be fair, she did know that she wanted to be with him yeah. before she started working on herself. Yeah, and that, part of the reason she did start working on herself was for him, I think. Yeah. So, you know, um, I thought, I thought that, I thought like for that, you know, it just like made her, you know, a little bit, you know, nervous after like, you know, him singing and, you know, Gabby singing, you know, Sharon Fry's like, you know, like, <laughs> like, you know, but, singing. I know. I was like, no, who, no, what, what is this? Um, and then um I say that as I randomly sing lines all the time on this <laughs> podcast. <laughs> I recognize I recognize my hypocrisy, okay? Oh um, you know, so I think I I mean I guess, you know, with Simone telling her she needs to fight, you know, I thought that was, you know, interesting. I don't really think she fought for Jordan, you know, just going back to the Beverly Hills, you know, um and and all that, you know, I, I was like it's just like you know, I give up real quick, you know, and you know, right. talking about it, maybe you know I learned that it wasn't meant to be. Like what? <gasps> uh, that line. <laughs> like y'all was married. Come on now. Uh, it, it, but it is she wrong? <laughs> is she uh... wrong? <laughs> She's not wrong. <laughs> <laughs> she's not wrong to me that was so hilarious too because i was just like yo the writers are dead deading this like they're like they are dead deading this bro <laughs> and that's before they found out <laughs> before they found out that homecoming got picked up for another season and <laughs> yeah. i was just like why are the writers doing them like this <laughs> them and by them I mean Jordan and Simone yeah. their uh, relationship but again to her point I it wasn't meant to be and maybe because they finally let go of it yeah. which is something that they struggled with uh, they got the clarity and the space that they needed to realize that it wasn't meant to be because to be honest they had some issues <laughs> as Spencer would say I can finally see now <laughs> Right, <laughs> exactly. Right, yeah. and I mean, look, they had a they had an adorable relationship, um, and I think that they learned a lot from each other, and I still think that they have love for each other and care about each other. Uh, but to that point, I I think is absolutely right, and they're not meant to be. Yeah, and um, as far as you know, Keisha and you know her letter, you know, I thought it was I thought it was cute. I thought it was. I thought it was really good. I think. I think they go and probably had like the best relationship on the show, because you know. You think? Yeah, I don't. I don't see any of these other relationships as you know. Anything you know, anything else you you know, I don't think. Some. I mean, Thea and Damon is you know. All that. You know. All right. Let's skip to that because we're gonna talk about Damon and Kina. No, no, no. Because I wanna. I wanna go back on this. This point about the other relationship so you don't see Damon and Thea lasting I also don't see them lasting yeah I mean I don't even see like 
the the whole thing with Damon and Simone, like you know, I, I how I, I, how sway? You know, I just don't see it. It's just not there for me. You know, it, the dance, the dance didn't do anything no, for you. No, it did not. <laughs> Boo! <laughs> that was straight trash for real, honestly. The trash? Why? It's just because, like you know, like I guess I, I, I'm holding it to a you know a higher standard, you know of you know Simone. I mean, not Simone. Spencer and, and Olivia, you know, like yeah, this is a different show. It's different characters. But you know, I just like you know, you can like see it, you know, before, and I just can't see it, you know. I just it don't just it just don't you know don't fit right for me, you know. That's really interesting. I actually think the exact opposite. I think Homecoming works best uh, because of the chemistry between Damon and Simone, in my opinion. Um, and, you know, I think that was abundantly clear because, and to your point, I think that, you know, Simone and Damon, I can't quite say that like they're each other's person yet, but they definitely have a strong connection, uh, because throughout Damon and Thea's whole entire, uh, storyline arc in this episode, Simone was a very present shadow, (laughs) like. Literally and like literally and figuratively and like physically and like non physically like from the very jump when Kina comes to visit uh, Damon and she sees him with Thea, one of the first things out of her mouth is like, "And where's her mom? <laughs> and where's and she like covered it up? I like, mentioned a couple of other people, but she was like, "And where's her mom? Simone so was the only girl that she mentioned out of her mouth." Um, so that she already Thea already had to contend with that and then you know he's goes to support her for their tennis tournament that they were in uh both of them had rivals both of them won their matches uh, simone did didn't make the top six which we can talk about that but you know even in that even in damon supporting her simone was right was right there, jealous, like you know what I mean, envious, uh-huh. envious of the kiss. And yeah. Jr. noticed it, and then th- this was all capped off with like, um, <laughs> well, I say capped off with the Naruto run, like <laughs> <laughs> because she overheard them talking. And by the way, this was a long for the for the for the show. You know, I'm all about timing uh-huh. the show. This was a long conversation that they had. Yeah, that definitely was. Uh, and literally started with her apologizing for saying that they couldn't be there for one another mm-hmm. um and let me let me let me roll it back because it started with Keisha saying it was that really hard to call Damon for Thea who was having a freak out about yeah. her racket right um and she was like yeah it's one of the hardest things and then it went to the apology say about sorry we couldn't support one another she asked him about his dad because JR told her, by the way, there was a whole little, there were several hints about JR uh, having feelings for Simone possibly um, in this episode that were just scattered. Um, but yeah, it talks to, <laughs> talks to him about his dad. He confides in her again. And then, you know, it's, they're just like, yeah, there's, there's been something since we first met and and it ended with you know ever wonder if timing had been different and she says all the time so they're like it it just is damon and simone like i don't know any else <laughs> any other way to put it like um you know and i think i think that was that that sucks you know to you know be going through you know all these emotions because you know you just you this this girl this you know white girl just can we say that that, that that comment that she made was kind of racist you know oh yeah absolutely like you know i'm like what and you know she you know she cut up her rack or whatever um yeah and, very know, like ridiculous just outlandish yeah, stuff like, that that girl was doing you know and it's just like you know like what is all this for like you know obviously you know I, you wouldn't have done that if you didn't think she can beat you you know Exactly. So, so she like, did it because she knew that she and she still beat her. Boom. Yeah, yeah. So like you know, that just made her mad. But uh, now, nah, um, you know, having to sit there and you know listen to that whole conversation, um, with you know 
Simone and Damon. You know, I I thought that was you know just you know tough for her because you know she Damon supposed to be her she, boy. Number so. one, she did not have to sit and listen. Man, she, she was overhearing man, <laughs> their conversation, man, and man. she stayed to her own detriment. <laughs> and I love Thea, but yeah. I had to put that out there. But um, she she overhears the conversation, and you know it's just like. Like she said, you know, do it. You think I'm a placeholder, you know? And this man and I lying. Say yes. <laughs> this man lying. <laughs> he big capping. They they was using they he used... big capping talking about and this is a good uh point a good point to loop back to his mom because his mom told him that he is her bright light. Um and this was after him sort of spending the episode trying to figure out how to tell him her about the affair by the way for the first time ever we finally get to know what her name is and it's yeah. kina kina sims i was yeah. very excited because i was just like they have not given this woman a first name yet <laughs> like <laughs> and so they finally did it uh so i'm so glad i i really i actually really enjoy kina like yeah. from the way that she stepped onto the screen and she's like my hvc you ain't i'm gonna experience okay i'm ready and i'm like yeah, yes girl <laughs> Coming with a completely different energy than you did in the beginning. And I lo- like yeah. I love that. She was super, super light. And I think that was a cool dynamic. But again, you can see how close, number one, that her and Damon have always been yeah. to how their relationship has evolved because she she's become better and hasn't been his manager anymore. Yeah. yeah. Um, and that was evidenced in her hearing this news from him about the affair and then coming back and being like, it's just, it's going to take me some time. It's mm. going to take me some time, but you are like one of the best things in my life. Right. Uh, and I really loved that. I really did. And, you know, I, I think, you know, also, you know, like, it, I guess he is like, do you got any like secrets that you need to tell me or anything? And, you know, it flashed back, you know, to when Nathaniel, you know, told, you know, Thea um, was like, yeah, Jordan broke up. Jordan, so Jordan and broke up or whatever and all that. You yeah. Know, and stuff. And you know, so I mean I, I understand why, you know, she, she kept it to herself because like, yeah, it cause this man wasn't Damon, necessarily her secret to tell. Yeah, true. And you know, Damon would have been over there to Simone, right? Next oh, I gotta go Thea. You. you know. I see you later. Right, exactly. <laughs> exactly. And here's the thing, it's very interesting that Simone made the choice not to tell him about her breakup with Jordan. Um, she super inten- t- intentionally did that. Yeah. Um, which I think, hmm. in one way, I like understand she thinks it's like some self, some sacrificial thing. Um, but again, like just be honest and like wherever the cards fall, they fall. Um, so I think she could have told him, but I understand why she didn't. Um, in you know in some sort of like respect for his relationship with Thea yeah like you know um it it was it was definitely you know I'm I'm you know I'm glad they can support each other Simone and you know Damon but you know they they both know it's more than more than what it is you know even if I don't believe they'll make a you know good you know couple or whatever I think they would make a good couple you know Sorry for all you demons. But yeah, they both there. they both know what it me. is. Don't, they both don't come for me. You know? No, nah. <laughs> <laughs> no, they love you, Jason. They love you. They're not gonna come for you. Um, they might try to, Manda. It's like, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> 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 um, uh, yeah, yeah, but yeah, to, for sure. When she was just like, "Am I a placeholder?" and he told her that lie. Yeah. Uh, you know, you're not. You're you're my bright light. Yeah. Um, and then, you know, it's like, a, and you know, I I guess some people would be like, you don't you don't like you know the moan, but you like you know Spencer and Olivia, and you know, like you're a big Spencer fan, but you don't you know like the like Damon or you know Simone as much. You know, I'm like yeah, no two different. I love shows. how you find a way to make this about Spencer James, and he was nowhere <laughs> in this you in this in this show. <laughs> It'd be there next that week. just shows you how big of a Spencer <laughs> stan, not even a fan, a stan he is. Who has mentioned Spencer James? <laughs> Only you. Only you. 
<laughs> this is about Damon and Simone <laughs> and homecoming. <laughs> nah, but um, <laughs> no, um, I I get your point, and people have their preferences. People yeah. have their preferences, which is fine. Um, but yeah, I definitely think it's it's gonna be interesting yeah. because back to that point about. You know, Thea having won her match, Simone let her borrow her racket. Mm-hmm. She's still, you know, even though racket have super specific specifications for each individual tennis player, mm-hmm. uh, Thea still beat her opponent with Simone's racket. And Simone beat her opponent as well. But I don't know. We saw some shades of backdoor pilot Thea Mays. Uh, mm-hmm. And she was just like, the racket is too heavy. I don't know how you use this. <laughs> uh, and there's some questions. There could, could be some questions about how in the world Simone didn't make the top six, even though she won her match um, and has been winning her matches for the most part over the last couple of episodes. I mean, you know, I I, I mean, I assume people, you know, think, you know, Thea has something to do with it, but I don't, you know, I think, you know, it's just something that, you know, just, you know, just happened. And, you know, I think, I guess like, you know her and um, what is her friend name? I keep forgetting everybody's name. Uh, the gr- the girl that she played. Her oh yeah, I don't know her name because she was like, well, yeah, I don't know her name. <laughs> um, and you know, I think, I think it was like more of to see you know how Simone would you know handle it. I mean, she did a good job, I thought, but you know, I guess the you know the coach didn't you know, you know, feel the same. Coach way. Lonnie is trifling and they need to make her a recurring character next yeah, season because yeah. I'm tired of not seeing her <laughs> like there. Like this invisible person who's also keeping Simone from being great. How dare you? Yeah. So, you know, um, I thought, I, I think, I did, you know, I thought it was that, that, that storyline is interesting. Obviously, she's going to be on the tennis team or whatever, but, you know, um, we we will see what happens. We will. And I think that's a good point to get to predictions. That's a great point to get to predictions. Actually. Oh, um, Kina, Kina, I'm gonna say something about that situation. You know, with yeah, with, with, with no with, you know, her finding out that her husband, you know, cheated on her. Like, you know, that'd be tough. You know, I thought I thought it was tough. For, Absolutely. You know, for Damon also to be like, you know, mom, you know, uh, you know, dad is my biological father. You know, and and it's just like. That's just a hard thing, you know, to tell somebody. You know, I, I know how him and Jr. was like in the beginning, you know, like sitting there talking to each other, you know, like is you going, you going to tell your mom? And he's like, you know, I just tell her bits and pieces, be pieces of it. And you know, Jr. like, you know, he's not going to be honest or whatever. He's just like, I'm going to leave some stuff out, you know, details out. Um, but you know, when it when it was a run, when it came down to it, you know, he was he told her, and yeah. he had to, and I knew that he was going to. So yeah. like, you know, it was just like. That was a, a hard thing to, you know, tell, you know, your mom that, because, like, her husband got Alzheimer's now, so, like, he can never Yeah, no, it's, anything. I think, yeah, I think personally it, it, it's one of the, I think, one of the best storylines of the show, yeah. because I think that is, like, there's such a, 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 a natural tension there, because you saw how his dad was, yeah. like, with the Alzheimer's, and uh how much like just how many confusing twists and turns that damon has had figuring out who his adoptive family is and then for it to be this and then for him to have to tell his mom who he you know who they've just gotten close again and you know seeing her handle it like just yeah and she to be fair like she was just like nah this is not she had a very normal reaction and came back and was just like i just it's something that's going to take time, and I'm really excited to see how they explore that in season two for sure. Yep. Um, and you know, I, I like that also. I like that Damon took the uh, to you know the the emergency family meeting. I, I didn't say that, but I, I, did I like. He? Yeah, he did. She came. Was she there? Yeah, she came. The thing I don't think Nathaniel was there, but I know. Uh, no, she, she, no, she wasn't. She was away, but I don't think Thea was there. I think I no, I think Thea was there. I literally just watched that, but I don't think she was there. I, I thought she came, you know, she came with him. I'm pretty sure. <gasps> she was there. Yeah, oh my gosh. she was there. I was like, oh, I know I've seen her. <laughs> Wait, so this girl just didn't say anything the whole entire time no, in the scene? She, no, she did not. 
That's why I didn't know she was there because she was literally just lurking in the background. What? <laughs> wow. Look at you teaching me stuff. Wow. No, that's I pay that's hilarious. <laughs> yeah, you do. I, I've watched this now about three times and I did not notice that she was there. Yeah, so. they did a really got. They did a. I'll say this, uh, the for the director of that episode, they did a really good job with that because you never. I feel like that was a choice to be like she's never quite on the inside because yeah. she wasn't even a focal point. Right. Uh, she literally didn't even have a line. Like, mm-hmm. <laughs> so that was very. That was super interesting. So now mm-hmm. she'll be a part of family dinners now. And now every Sunday. She did go. She did, to be fair, she did go so like, uh, a like bit one. ago, but she yeah. hasn't been in a while. Yeah. Yeah. So I hope they have another family dinner. Is she there? And <laughs> some good old drama. Some good old drama. <laughs> um. <laughs> so yeah. Uh, predictions. So the season finale, and congrats, all, congrats to them, man. Doing it season of a television show especially a first season is hard and so congrats to them for doing it completing it getting a season two but here we go the end of season one irreplaceable 113 meant to be as homecoming can we continue simone grapples with her role on the tennis team and thea receives some upsetting news with coach marcus nowhere to be found an interim coach steps in which creates conflict for damon and jr as they try to win their most important game Keisha throws herself into raising funds for Brinkson in hopes of helping to keep her chosen family together while Cam makes a decision that could have major consequences. Meanwhile, Amara finds herself back in the spotlight with a surprising career opportunity. Christine Swanson, my girl, uh, directed the episode written by N.K. and Megan McNamara. So, uh, let's start with, um, because we were just talking about, uh, well, no, no, no. Let's start with Marcus. Let's start with Marcus. Okay. okay. And the interim coach and Damon and Jr. What you think is going on there? Um. Well, you know, I think, you know, I feel like you know, Coach Marcus is going to be like the, you know, cliffhanger type thing. Like he probably might be like laying somewhere, you know, passed out or whatever. But as far as like, Aww. like as far that makes me sad. as far as, um, the the interim coach, I honestly, you know, the only person that I can you know possibly see you know causing a problem for you know Damon and and Jr. is Jr. Pops. Yeah, it wasn't he in the uh, promo. I think he was, I, I, and so I, I think he's going to be the interim coach. Yeah, I, that would that would be my you know my my thought on that, and you know making it hard on him, you know. Um, and being extra hard yeah, on Damon. Did, yeah, so. Because we already know how that story yeah. went. <laughs> so, it would, it would, it's going to be very interesting. Yeah, yeah. Um, or extra hard on JR, because he was always yeah. like, Damon, you're great. Yeah, yeah. Which is super interesting, too, because he knew the whole time. Oh, he's just sinister. I don't like that man. I don't like that man. But uh, I hope Damon and JR, because they've worked to be better for each other mm-hmm. after having the conflict that they've had. And so I hope that it doesn't, like, it's not another conflict for them, but they rise above right. the mess that the dad tries to do. Mm-hmm. And I hope Marcus, look, I'm going to end on a hopeful note, even if this is might be a crazy prediction for actuality. But I'm going I'm to be like, I hope Marcus is at some sort of, like, rehab, short-term rehab stint. And is like back on his back on his. <laughs> um, but you're very well like the, your prediction about him being a cliffhanger and, um, maybe just passed out somewhere, uh, or just doing some ridiculousness, getting yeah. into fights or something. Yeah. I could absolutely yeah. see, but I hope it's the good good one, good one. Yeah. Um. But this is NK, so <laughs> <laughs> it's probably gonna be the latter. It's probably gonna be the latter. Um, Keisha, Keisha and Cam, I think Keisha puts together this like talent show esque deal to raise money, almost like a, yeah. what is it called? Like a telethon or whatever, like one of those things. Mm-hmm. 
Um, so I think that's what Takesha is going to do. Uh, and Cam makes a decision that could have major consequences. I feel like they've dropped... Yeah, it was just like, I feel like they've dropped him sort of trying to get back into football, but that might come back up. Yeah. Yeah, I think, you know, um, he might decide to go play. Um, and, you know, it can, you know, potentially be career career threatening, you know, um, life, life threatening, I mean. Um, right. With, yeah, his career is already threatened. Yeah, so, yeah. I, I meant life threatening. <laughs> no, no, I know. I know. I'm not just messing with you. I'm just messing with you. Uh, yeah, I, I think so too. I think it's going to be about football. And I think, I hope this opens the door because I think that they teased it a little bit and then dropped it. But I hope this opens the door for him playing baseball because right. he can play baseball yeah. with, the, with the aneurysm. Mm-hmm. Um, and he's really good at baseball. And I think that, that one of the things that I want to see for next season actually is him being in other storylines right. apart from Keisha yeah. because he, he and Damon are roommates and we barely see them together. I think yeah. we've seen them take together like a grand total of twice, maybe three times. Um, so yeah, just getting him involved with other people, getting him involved in other storylines, um, which I think baseball would be a really great way to, to do that. Yeah. Uh, and I'm just not here for Santiago <laughs> crap anymore. <laughs> So I'm just like, we need somebody to come put Santiago in his place a little bit because I'm just, yeah. And I think Cam is that person. Yeah. Um. Uh, Amara, what's the surprising career opportunity, do you think? Um, ooh, that's a tough one. Um, Because she is very, you know, she can do anything, I feel like, you know. Right. <laughs> that makes it really hard to determine what that... Because it literally could be with the college. It yeah. could be outside of the co- yeah, college. So like, because it says spotlight, I'm like, does she get offered a full-time job as a journalist? But she already did, so I don't know. Maybe maybe she might, you know, get uh, Zeke's job, you know, or something like that. Ooh. You know? Uh, interesting. Um, Or, you know, like... Maybe become the dean yeah. of her uh, college? Yep. So, you know, I think that's a possibility. The chair of the journalism department? Yeah. And yeah, it's either going to be a major promotion. <laughs> I know. That I was just like, it's either going to be one of these five things. <laughs> no. uh, she, I feel like it's either going to be a promotion within the school or which is, I think, unexpected because of <clears throat> how they've been treating her. Yeah. Um, Or it's going to be uh, an opportunity in journalism maybe working for a major publication writing for them or maybe as like a tv personality journalist bit so yeah any of those five <laughs> seven eight things um is gonna happen they say that they say it's meant to be so it gotta be you know something true 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 um you're right look at you bring it back in the tagline okay <laughs> Um, who else? I think the last bit here is Simone grapples with her role in the tennis team. Uh, and Thea receives some upsetting news. Hmm. Um, yeah, I think Simone, I hope they put Simone in the top six by the end of this episode. I don't care how it happens, But Simone needs to be because I think the top six is like is the team. Yeah. So she has to be on the team. So I right. hope that they figure out a way to put her on the team, regardless of whatever happens. I don't know if that'll directly be related to Thea. Yeah. Simone getting on the team. Right. But yeah, I don't know what Thea's upsetting news could be. Um, mm. She's not gonna k- get kicked off the team. No. Nah, yeah. She's not. She she like the first A. Exactly. Of like the tennis. She is number one. Yeah. So like you know, ain't no way, and heck, they kicking her off. Um, right. I guess you know. Yeah. I mean, I guess Simone might be like uh, you know, like one of their bench. You know, like she is gonna be one of their bench people. I don't know how tennis works. Um. So, uh, she. I guess she. I mean, she going. I guess she going. You know, try to help out. You know, her teammates or whatever. And you know, she going to struggle with that. And you know, trying to. You know want her for her wanting to play and all that so like i think that's going right. i think that's going to be like what she grapples with um in thea yeah 
I just don't know what this the uh, upsetting yeah. news. The only thing I can think about is like if it was some sort of reference back to their case against Kevin. Yeah, yeah. That that that's probably what it is. Um, uh, which is sad, and you know, it's just sad. But I, yeah, it's just sad. But I also think it um opens the door back uh up with Jr. Mm-hmm. Uh, and his ex-girlfriend as yeah. well yeah um for them to get uh for for the truth to come to light yeah. with that situation um so yeah that's man it's gonna be a packed finale it, it definitely is <laughs> i'm excited to see what the cliffhanger is gonna be or the several cliffhangers because <laughs> okay um and yeah any other predictions from you uh, I mean, it's a. I mean, I, I, I think it's going. It's possible. Uh, by the end of the episode, I think Damon going to find out that that Jordan and Simone broke up somehow, some way. Yeah. Um, I was literally just about to say, like, Damon and Simone will have a moment for sure. Yes. There is going to be a moment. Yeah. So. In the finale, and I'm excited to I'm, see it. I'm not. But... Uh. I don't know if David and Thea can hold on to next season, to be honest. This was, like, the quickest thing. When the, like, even, like, from the jump, you were just like, girl, oh, baby, what you doing? Like, don't do this. Don't do this. Like, just bring, just bring up with this man because it's not. Look, he... Yeah. So Simone and Damon are going to have a moment. Yeah. I don't know how uh, Damon and Thea are going to be, but I think he's going to find out that she knew. Yeah. Uh, that she knew about um, Jordan and Simone breaking up. Yeah. So, yeah, it's going to be some interesting confessions. I mean, it's not confessions anymore. <laughs> it's going to be interesting. Irreplaceable. There you go. You must not know about me. <laughs> if they find a way to integrate Beyonce into this episode, I will give them their props. <laughs> <laughs> Um, but yeah, those are our predictions. Jason, thanks for coming on. No problem, no problem. Thanks for having me. Hopefully next season, um, you like some more people in the show, other than your core, what is it, core four or five people that you identify? Mm, yeah. Hopefully. Yeah. Hopefully I can get into it more. Like, cause like, I, like yeah. I haven't been able to like, really get into it. Like, I just watch it right now. So, you know, I'm not mm-hmm. really focused up on it. Yeah. Like, as I am with All American, but you know, hopefully I can get get into it next season. Yeah, I'm excited because I like, I am excited for them ending some storylines and start like reading this. Um, it feels like a really good entry point mm-hmm. into next season. Like it doesn't necessarily feel like a finale in yeah. the things that like the major ways a finale feels like, yeah. but it feels like it feels so open for other storylines in season two. And that's what I like about it. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. Thanks for listening to Film Study and All American Podcasts, and stay tuned for the next episode. Oh, and happy birthday, Jason. <laughs> <laughs> thank so you, tell thank him happy birthday in the comments. Tell him happy birthday in the comments.